Hi, this is Brian Hatfield, state senator from the 19th Legislative District. The 2012 legislative session has begun, and my colleagues and I find ourselves again facing the task of dealing with the slow recovery from the Great Recession. This is the second time in two months that the legislature has opened session in the face of crippling economic news. At the end of November, at the governor's request, a 17-day special session was opened with the goal of trimming $2 billion from the 2011-2013 biennial budget. Now, such a task was simply too great for the time allotted to us. We need to remember that we have already trimmed around $10 billion from state spending over the last three years. We've heard the term cutting the fat. Well, the fat is gone. Any cuts we make now are deep into the flesh of our state's operations, education, social services, health care. All those programs would be impacted and in some cases permanently harmed by any additional cuts we as a legislature make. Governor Gregoire presented my colleagues and I with a plan, but that plan didn't take into account the fact that we are sent here by the people to make informed decisions that are in their best interests. In this case, the term best interests doesn't really apply. There are some awful choices to be made, and we will not make them just because a timeline has been laid out for us. We have and will listen to the people who will be impacted by our decisions before we act. We heard people talk about state health programs that are important to their families. We heard humbling stories about how people use state programs to climb back to respectability. We listened, and with those stories in mind, we approved a down payment of nearly 500 million in cuts. It was not the total we were asked to, but never forget, we are here to represent people, not budgets. Now that the 2012 session has begun, we find ourselves again having to prepare to make cuts to our state budget, this time in the area of $1.5 billion. As I told you, we have a head start thanks to the down payment we made in December, but any further cuts will be more painful than any we have made up to this point. In order to do this, we are going to need to work together again. In the spring of 2011, the Senate, Republicans, and Democrats came together to pass one of the first truly bipartisan budgets in state history. With a 27 to 22 split between the two parties, there was no way that the budget couldn't be a joint effort. Political divisiveness has risen to levels unseen in our country, yet here in Olympia, we were able to come together and make hard choices as one body, not a body divided by red and blue, Republican and Democrat, and the desire to make the other side look bad. I look forward to similar cooperation in the coming months. One reason for the bipartisan agreement um, that allowed the 2011-2013 budget to pass was the emergence of a group called the Roadkill Caucus. This is a group I am proud to belong to. It's a collection of moderate Democrats who for years have felt run over by heavy, heavy majorities on the Democratic side or hard uh, political positions uh, from, from conservatives uh, and liberals uh, on both sides of the, of the political spectrum. You know what you find in the middle of the road, yellow lines and roadkill, hence the name. Well, in 2011, that caucus was more than just a clever name. It was a group of moderates who stood up and demanded that their voice be heard. As a result, we were able to make sweeping changes to workers' compensation and unemployment programs. 88% of businesses will pay lower taxes than they did last year because of changes enacted with the help of the Roadkill Caucus. Employers which laid off no staff over the last four years will see their rates shrink by a whopping 71%, an all-time low for businesses in that rate class. This is especially good news for small businesses which make up 91% of this class. In addition, workers' comp rates will not rise, marking the first time since 2007 that L&I rates have not increased. This is expected to save businesses in the state approximately $150 million next year. Changes and savings like those will help the state come back from the crippling effects of the Great Recession, and I am happy and proud to have been a part of it. As we move forward, my partners and I in the Roadkill Caucus have other changes and reforms we would like to see the legislature take a close look at, like delaying the implementation of Initiative 1163, something we simply can't afford to uh, implement right now, changes to the Medicare fraud statute to improve recovery of improperly paid funds, reforms to public records law to limit costs to cities for repeat or, or nuisance requests, bringing all school district personnel at the K-12 level into the state pools for health insurance, 
Now, these reforms will certainly stir up controversy, uh, but in terms of the health insurance issue, uh, we owe it to the state to at least examine this proposal. This is a change that would remove the individual district insurance pools and roll the entire state into one pool uh, for insurance for state employees. The teachers union is called FEL, but with the potential savings of $90 million annually, it's a reform that would seem to have advantages at both the state and the local level. And while we're on the subject of reforms, I'd like to take the time to talk about changes to our education system. The best way to climb out of a hole created by the Great Recession is to ensure that we have a workforce that is ready to lead us into the future. That means making sure that the people who are entrusted with our, the instruction of our children are the very best at what they do. A package of bills proposed by State Representative Eric Pettigrew from the Seattle area would seek to do just that. By other things, beginning a teacher evaluation system in the next five years, a system that would be a major change to the way teacher tenure is determined, linking tenure with a list of metrics which would include student performance. To put it simply, one of the factors that would determine if a teacher is granted tenure would be the performance of his or her students. In order to be granted tenure, a non-tenured teacher would have to receive high ratings for three consecutive reviews, and if a tenured teacher receives inadequate reviews, they can lose that tenure. Well, this bill does go against years of set doctrine when it comes to teaching contracts and determining who teaches where. It is one of the strongest steps taken to ensure that the best candidates are in the classroom preparing the next generation. Another portion of Representative Pettigrew's reforms would involve charter schools. These are public schools funded with government dollars. They differ from traditional public schools because they are granted charters by the authorizers and are not governed by many of the federal, state, and local laws regulating traditional public schools. Now again, this flies directly in the face of voter-rejected charter school initiatives in 1996 and 2000, and charter school legislation that was rejected by the voters in 2004. But the latest version would help some of the lowest performing schools in our state in the urban areas. With a benefit like that, it's at least worth having the conversation. These are just a few of the very important issues we're working on as we try and uh, kind of change the way of, of doing business here in the state of Washington. Certainly these issues are not without controversy and I certainly want to hear from folks with their uh, comments and concerns uh, on this and other legislation that we are working on during the 2012 session. Once again, this is State Senator Brian Hatfield. Thank you for your time.